Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video. Today's video is actually featuring the My Monthly Hero January 2022 Hero Arts Kit. Um, this one was so fun to play with. It gave me an opportunity to um, do some things that I don't normally do and that's how you find new techniques and it's so fun and I love that. So first things first, the um, kit includes a layering um stamp set in here and so I kind of wanted to play around with a little bit of the colors because I don't typically use layering stamps and so I wasn't really sure what I would like. In the kit um, you get the stamp set, you get the coordinating frame cuts, a super fun cover plate, you'll see that here in just a minute, a fancy key die, four ink cubes, and some red iridescent gems. So once I had everything um, like I kind of played and went around, I decided that I wanted to switch up the color of the leaves or flowers, be it what they may. I ended up going with a flower look, but you can do either or. So since I was trying out colors, it gave me an opportunity to kind of play around um, with it a little bit before I made my card. If you're not familiar with the, the kit and it's not something that you have ever um, heard of before, just run down. You get all of those things for $34.99 and it is a subscription kit or you can buy them themselves, but be aware if you're not subscribed that once they're sold out, they're sold out. They won't ever make this kit again. Um, so getting the subscription is the best way to ensure that you always end up with a kit. But anyway, moving on from there. So I tried it a bunch of different ways with a bunch of different Hero Arts inks. And then I was getting it very, um, how do I word this? Like the Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe vibes from the cover plate. And so I decided I wanted to make a trifold card. You know, I leave all my mistakes in, so I'm gonna show them to you. Yes, I am. And then I'm gonna show you how I fixed it. Um, so here I have cut three pieces of paper, three pieces of cardstock. And two of them are five and a quarter by five and a half. And one of them is an A2 size card. And the way that I'm going to do this, and you can see here, I'm, I've already made my error because I forgot that one side was five and a quarter. And so I scored it on the wrong side. You want to score your four and a quarter side on the side that is five and a quarter. So that way you can just score right at one inch. I'm just using my bone folder um, to line this up. And then here's where I realized, like I was so lost and thought about all my fancy ideas for my card that I didn't double check the measurements. Because I have a cover plate that I'm using with this, I did not cut a new piece of paper. I just went with it because ultimately I didn't think you'd be able to see it at the end of the card. And guess what? You can't. I was right. Winning. Um, but so the whole premise of my trifold card here is these little um, flaps that I am using my bone folder on here that I'm just folding over, that's going to adhere to the back of my A2 size card and give me that full panel trifold that I'm looking for. You could cover up the back with another piece of A2 size if seeing where the card is joined bothers you, but it doesn't bother me because I like to think people will be so captivated with the idea that somebody spent time making them a handmade card that they would not be inspecting the construction. So now we're gonna move on to the ink blending because like I said, it was giving me these vibes of, of like this whole other world behind this keyhole. And that was what I went with. So I've masked the side because I don't want my flap to have this brown on it. And I did speed this up. I'm not this quick at ink blending. Um, and you can see where my little um, fold mark is, but you're not gonna be able to see it by the end of it. Don't worry, hang tight. So I used brush corduroy and then I went around the edges with um, some ground espresso just to give this kind of like keyhole feel. Um, I wanted it to be um, kind of older looking, antique looking. It really honestly ended up kind of looking like leather, which I'm super excited that I did this because now if I ever want to get that look on a card, I know that this technique will work. But I've removed my masking tape on the side that was keeping my little um, trap door there clean. And now I'm putting the cover plate and the keyhole die in place. 
the cover plate doesn't really cut anything out. It really just more puts the image, um, it does make some small cuts in there, but it's almost like embossed. And like you can see when you pick it up and can see the light shining through what it looks like. I think it's absolutely beautiful, but I really wanted to play up the beautiful detail in the cover plate. And so I got out my um, liquid watercolor glimmer metallics and this is the copper. You want to make sure that you shake it up really, really good. And then I just put a little bit in one of my bowls I use for watercoloring. I did not dilute it because I'm not working on watercolor paper. This paper is not going to take a lot of moisture. It's Nina 80 pound cardstock, but it will allow me to kind of paint these details. I'm using a number two round brush and just like I said, I didn't dilute it. It's straight copper coloring. And you guys, oh my gosh, like I could not have made it any better. I couldn't. I could not have made it any better. It totally met my expectations. I love the way that it looks. It's my favorite part of the card. And you know I love a scene. And we're going to do a scene. And this is still the favorite part of my card. Um, but just because I think it came out so, just what I had in my mind, you know. And that so very rarely happens in a card making. Um that it's so exciting when it does happen. I forgot to mention when I was going over all the things for the kit that this is part of a blog hop and uh, Hero Arts is generously giving away a $50 gift card, um, but you have to leave a comment on the blog. The comments will be picked from the blog. Not that I don't love your YouTube comments, you know that I do, but if you want a chance to win the $50 gift card and I want you to win, believe me I do, uh, you have to hop over and if you're watching on YouTube, the link will be below. That is open through January 16th at 11.59 p.m. Um, so make sure that you get your comment in there beforehand. So here, everything is painted up. Um, I did speed this up again. I'm not this fast of a painter. Uh, and then I just went around the keyhole um, and that kind of finished it, this portion of it off. And you can see like from the light on my desk, like how shimmery it is. I'll hold it up though so you can see all the shimmers because you know I'm about showing off all the shimmers. Um, and it's just so pretty. I think a gold would look great here too. But then I wanted the elements to kind of pop a little bit more. So I decided to go in with um, a Copic marker. This is an E57. It's not, it's like a medium brown. And then I just put in some shadows under those elements. And I always go with my light source in the top right. So my shadows are in the bottom left. And that's what I did here as well. And then I just, like I said, I just added in those shadows around those design elements to really kind of make them pop off of the covers. Because this is going to be the first thing that you see, you know, when you open the envelope, this portion is the first part that you see. And so I really wanted it to be kind of something special. Ultimately, at the end of the day, can you still see my folded line? Not really. And so I'm fine with it. Now we're going to move on to picking our colors. Um, and that's where that's why I left the playing around portion in because I did use this piece to decide what color to do my foliage. And after comparing them and looking at them, the ones that I liked the best were the green, uh, which I, those ink cubes um, are included. Um, there's green ink cubes included in the kit, but I went with um, bubblegum and raspberry jam. And just because I really liked the boldness of the pink against that brown. So when I put my card together, I did notice that there was a little bit of extra that was hanging over on the right hand side. Um, so I marked out where my keyhole would sit. And then I also marked that line of the part that hangs over. Um, and the reason that I did that was so that I could mask it. I'm going to mask it right at that line. That it's a little bit further in from the fold line, but I don't care because you're not going to notice. You're not going to notice and you will notice if the scene is hanging out of the front of the card, but you're not going to notice that one little white strip. And so I was fine with it. Here I am lightly erasing my keyhole. You're probably not going to be able to see the outline of it on the camera, but I could in real life and I just needed it to be there faintly enough so I would know where to line up my tree branch when I was adhering it. So for the background, like I said, we're going to do a scene. You know we are. 
because I love them. And I, how are you supposed to create this, you know, keyhole that kind of peeps into this whole world if you don't have a world on the other side, right? Am I right? I'm right. So I did some salty ocean, I did some blueprint sketch, and then I went back over it with the salty ocean, um, just to kind of blend those in a little bit further. I did leave a little bit of a white gap in between my grasses and my sky, um, just because I didn't want that green to be created. For the grass portion of it, I actually used squeezed lemonade. Um, because it's such a light yellow once you combine it with a green it does take on that same hue and I wanted it to be really kind of light in the background and then the grass color is mowed lawn and then for where the swing is going to sit because if you've ever been on like a swing hanging off a tree or a tire swing or anything like that there's always there's nothing under there's no grass underneath that because your feet hit <laughs> your feet hit there when you go to stop yourself so it's always like brown mud dirt there you've killed all the grass at least that's we did when we were kids um and so now i'm going to remove that masking and i'm going to erase this line just um to make sure that that looks really clean and then double checking because you know i like to double and triple check i should have done that in the beginning and i wouldn't have had that line problem right so now I'm going to stamp these. I did stamp in the set is included um, is like these little flower vines that you can put on top of the swing. And I love that. I love it. I think that's so fun and kind of like it has this romantic feel. But ultimately, I didn't end up using them. It made my card look a little bit too busy. Um, I think that they would be super pretty. Um in another card design where maybe you didn't have so like this whole cover trifold business going on. So this is the bubble gum, which is my lightest color. And then I'm going to go back in and put in the detail layer. And for that, I'm going to use the raspberry jam, which is one of my favorite ink colors ever. Um, I just like pink. I can't help it. It just, it happens to me. Um, particularly like a dark magenta like that. I love a nail polish color, that color. Um, but anywho, so yeah, we're just going to be doing some stamping and then some die cutting to build up our scene. Um, as far as like things going with life, I super appreciate your guys encouraging comments on my videos. Um, you guys were very, very sweet and I totally appreciate that. Um, several of you have made comments about... Um, you know, like how I get all my card making done or how I manage to do anything with a new baby. And real talk, the only reason I'm able to do any of this is because I have an amazing husband and amazing family members. Like the only reason I can do any of these things, when we first brought Caitlin home, okay, because um, this is what I did when I had Peanut. I quit card making. I brought him home. Um, and my whole life was taking care of this new little baby and I struggled with that I think everybody struggles w with different things whether it's different stages or um you know different your life is completely changed when you have children you know it just is and um mostly for the better but sometimes you kind of lose yourself and when I had peanut I really stopped doing anything that was for myself uh, until I went back to work and consequently I struggled very much um, with motherhood plus my kid was colicky and he just screamed all the time which is hard <laughs> but with Caitlin when we brought her home um, it was probably like the two week mark and I was doing the same thing you know what I mean I slept when she slept I tried to squeeze in time to eat I pretty much lived on our couch but so did Eric and he was getting time out in the garage and when he was out in the garage you know doing things I would just be sitting on the couch while she was sleeping um you know I really didn't do anything and and at the two week mark he finally said to me like you're not yourself and I was like no I'm not myself I'm a crazy hormonal person who just had a baby like that's who I am now and he was like you have to you have to start doing something for yourself. You cannot just sit here on the couch and watch her sleep. You have to start doing something for yourself or you're, you're going to end up miserable. And he was right. 
Um, and so I, you know, started accepting the help and letting other people watch her and being okay with, you know, the, the guilt that comes with somebody else taking care of your child, um, because you feel like you should be doing it all the time. And it's not like I never take care of her. I take care of her the majority of the time or Eric and I take care of her the majority of the time. And, but I made that mistake with my first child. I wouldn't accept any help from my mother and she offered all the time. And I realized that I could not do that this time around if I wanted to be a happy mom. Um, and I, obviously, as we know, card making makes me happy. Um, and, and doing the furniture makes me happy. So those are things that I've just had to accept that it really does take a village to raise a child if everybody's going to be sane and happy with their lives. And I'm very blessed that you know, my mom and my mother-in-law do watch her, um, so that I could have a little bit of time to myself, not to mention, um, my husband is wonderful, wonderful and supportive. And he tries to do all of the things, um, so that I am not doing them by myself since he is the first one back to work. Um, you know, like this morning and I still feel guilty about it. I, I have no idea why I don't know if it's the socialization of being a mom or a wife I, I I'm not really sure but like I could not fall asleep last night if I don't fall asleep before Caitlin gets restless um because she sleeps in a bassinet next to our bed like I'm constantly anticipating her needs before she needs anything and so I have a hard time when she's moving around falling asleep side note back to the card so here, you know I don't love a white outline. Um, I'm just picking some Copic markers that kind of match my background. You do have to be careful with Hero Arts inks and alcohol markers because they are they will react with each other. And so if you're using a lighter color like I am here, you can pick up some darker colors if you're not careful. Um, I didn't have any issues, but that's just something to know when you're doing something like this. Like just be careful about the inks that you're using it's still totally worth it. It just means I have to take a little bit of extra time. Here I'm adding a little bit of shading to the kind of stone pathway as well as adding some other smaller stones, um, just kind of filling in that area a little bit. So anyway, this morning she, I didn't fall asleep until well after four o'clock because I, she kept moving around and I just could not fall asleep. Plus, then I get in my own head about things and like worrying about my kids and the random things that could happen. And I just can't, I, I can't turn my brain off sometimes. Um, and so when she woke up at eight, um, I woke him up and I was like, hey, can you get up with her? I didn't fall asleep until after four. And he was like, yeah, got it. No problem. And then he just let me sleep. And there was no like, there was no attitude, there was no nastiness, there was no punishment for me being the person who slept in. Like when I got up, he had um, cleaned up some Christmas stuff, he was vacuuming, um, he's just, he's a wonderful partner. And that's something that I have always wanted, um, is somebody who is willing to carry their 50%. And he is above and beyond that. And I am so just blessed and lucky that I have somebody in my life who loves me. Um, so yeah, anyway, off my soapbox about how wonderful my husband is, but he is. Um, here on the butterflies, I did want to include the butterflies. I thought they were really pretty, but I wanted to kind of break up how many there were in each section. And I do that with a little tape trick. Um, because I don't want to cut my stamps apart. You can, but I just prefer not to. So I use just little pieces of either masking tape or purple tape, and I will cover up the ones I don't want ink on, and then just remove them after the inking and stamp it down, and then you only get that one image that you inked up. It's a great little trick, especially for sentiments, if you want to stack them. So now that that is done, and I'm really loving the way my little Narnia world is coming together here, um, which if you have not read those books or watched the movie, I thoroughly enjoyed them. I thought that they were wonderful. I do think that they stopped making them because I think it was, 
the ship one. I think the ship one didn't do well and then they stopped making them. But I totally loved The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. And I cried. I did cry. I can totally admit that. Um, but so this little, little world's coming together here. And in order to kind of finish that off, I'm just going to add some grasses. There is a grass stamp that is included in the um, stamped images for this kit but I wanted the whole thing to look kind of like this open field. Um, and since we use that yellow in the background, it almost looks like it's at the point of like sunrise um, where you have like this, what, this yellow that kind of fades off into this white. And I think it's super pretty. Um, and I just love the way that it came out. So here I'm just using little flicks of color. Um, I used three different greens, a uh, light, a medium, and a dark. And then um, I'm going to go back over them in the, in the opposite direction. So dark, medium, light. And this is just going to kind of blend them together. I did not use the dark where it's the lightest um, just because I wanted to leave that kind of soft feel in the background there. Then once I was done with that, um, I did stamp a little sentiment on this portion. There's this cute little hello with a heart. Um, because even though this can be a Valentine's Day kit, I like to stretch my stamps and I like to get the most bang for my buck and I like to see how I can use them in other ways. And so the sentiment that I chose, this is the portion that'll be on the inside of the card, um, says sending loving thoughts. And I can send this to any of my, you know, crafty friends or, um, you know, just for any reason whatsoever. And I'm just going to accent that with that same butterfly in the same colors. So it still gives you an area, the trifold card still gives you an area where you can write, you know, your personalized greeting and it's not going to be, um, you know, interrupting your little scene here. Going to use that tape trick again just to put down two butterflies instead of three so it doesn't look exactly the same. And then we're going to start building our card. Um, here, I, I was still zoomed in, y'all. Forgive me. I didn't, I was just, you know, doing one thing and the next thing and moving on. So I'll zoom out here in a minute. But I just double checked my little crease there with my bone folder. And then I'm only going to add glue to the flap part. And this is the right, this is the part that I want to open up to the right. So I'm gluing it to the right hand side. And I'm just lining up those folds with the edge of my A2 size cardstock and gluing that down. For the left, I'm again only going to put adhesive on the flap part. You could use, you don't have to use a liquid, you could use a dry, that would be totally fine too. And then I'm gluing that to the left part. So then that way, when you fold it up, you can see like this little peep into this world and then when you open it up it's you know this whole scene that's kind of waiting there for you um I thought it was super fun to make and I I just I love when cards come together the way that you envisioned them I did have a little bit of trouble originally because the cut of the cover plate is so close to the edge it kept wanting to bend there but I just reinforced that fold with my bone folder and it didn't give me any more problems. You'll see that like in the photos in the beginning or if you look on the blog, there be still shots. I added some shimmer to my butterflies and to my foliage and then I'm just gonna go in with a white gel pen and add some highlights. I added them a little bit to the rope that's holding the seat, the actual seat. And then to just kind of bolster up that look of flowers instead of leaves, I'm going to go in and add little white dots that will act as like the center of my flowers. And it doesn't have to be exact. It just has to be enough to give the illusion and your brain will fill in the rust. So that is it. That's the whole card. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. And um, I do appreciate your support and encouragement. Please head over to the blog for your chance to win. And I will catch you guys on the next video. Bye.